Have you noticed premature graying? Maybe chronic pain in your body, lower energy levels? Do you have asthma and you have increased wheezing? Or maybe you react to different sulfates like dried fruit, for example, causes a major reaction in your body. If that's the case, you might have a vitamin B12 deficiency. Vitamin B12 deficiencies are some of the most common in our society. And vitamin B12 plays such a critical role in nervous system function, liver detoxification, as well as neurotransmitter production. And so when we look at some of the main symptoms of a B12 deficiency, fatigue is a really big one. Also mental problems, not being able to think sharply and quickly, having chronic pain, or particularly like neuralgia type pain, like where it's almost like a shooting nerve, that can oftentimes be a sign of a B12 deficiency. Also premature graying of the hair is commonly associated with B12 deficiencies. They say 60% of the adults over 60 have a B12 deficiency and roughly 30% of the individuals that are younger, right, have some sort of a B12 deficiency. And in America, when we're testing B12 or serum B12, they look at, they look at the levels and they don't mark it. They don't, it's not flagged unless it's under 200 PG per ml, picograms per milliliter. In Japan, they use a much higher number, 550 picograms per milliliter. And most functional health coaches that I know, we look at it, we want to see it up over 800 picograms per milliliter. And so for most people, their B12, it may be three or 400. I see this all the time on labs. It's three or 400, which is very, very low. They're having a lot of these symptoms. They're infertile. They are um, dealing with acne. They have premature graying of their hair. They have chronic pain. They have fatigue, low energy, right? They have trouble sleeping at night. A lot of these common symptoms, right, that are associated with B12 deficiency and they're not being told they have it because their levels are not being flagged. They have three or 400 picograms per milliliter, which is very low, but not low enough to be classified as a deficiency. And so that's one of the big issues here. So a couple of the little known symptoms, one is increased wheezing and asthmatic. So if you have asthma and you have increased wheezing and increased dependency on the steroids to help you breathe, that's a sign you may very well have a vitamin B12 deficiency. People who have sulfite sensitivity, you see B12 is really important for glutathione production and for sulfur metabolism in the liver. And so if you're deficient in B12, you're not gonna be able to metabolize and break down sulfites. And we find those in a lot of wines, a lot of baked goods, as well as things like, um, like dried fruits. Okay, if you're noticing that sulfite sensitivity, okay, then that's a sign that um, you may have this B12 deficiency. Acne is common with B12 deficiency. Allergies in general, seasonal allergies, um, food-based allergies can be associated with B12 deficiencies. Also on top of that, depression, anxiety, a lot of the mental health problems associated with B12 deficiency. Infertility is a common uh, symptom of B12 deficiency. Also could be related to zinc deficiency as well. Um, so these are all things that you need to be looking at. So when we think about B12, I told you how it's really important for liver detoxification. It's also very important for nervous system function and for the production of good neurotransmitters, serotonin, dopamine, as well as norepinephrine. And so we need that. It's also really important for red blood cell formation. When we don't have enough B12, the red blood cells aren't able to mature properly and they become very large in size and they're not able to move oxygen and nutrients into cells effectively and that can cause fatigue and that can cause you know lowered mitochondrial energy production so worse fat burning it can also cause issues with the brain right so this is what's going to cause us to not be able to think sharply and quickly and be more prone to anxiety and depression also we're not going to be able to get oxygen nutrients to our um, reproductive areas, right? So for the sperm for men and for, for women into the ovaries. And so therefore infertility goes up. So really, really important that we're getting that B12 level so the red blood cell will mature. And you'll be able to see this on a blood lab. One of the things that we look at for a B12 deficiency is something called a megaloblastic anemia. And this is where your MCV or mean corpuscular volume, the MCV, if you look at your blood lab, it should be between 85 and 92. If it's up above that, let's say it's 95, 96, 97, that's a sign that the red blood cell is too large, 
and so it hasn't matured properly, often associated with folate or B12 deficiencies, B12 being the most common. Okay, also we're gonna see the all your red blood cell counts, your, your hematocrit, hemoglobin, all that very, very low. Okay, and that's called a megaloblastic anemia when the size, or the overall size of the blood vessel is large, but you don't have enough um, hemoglobin that's in the blood cell. That's a B12 deficiency. And then on top of that, another couple things that we'll look at, one is homocysteine levels. Homocysteine is a breakdown product of the amino acid methionine. Homocysteine levels should be between six and nine normally, right? For somebody that's healthy, somewhere in that range. For some functional practitioners, they wanna see it even lower. They wanna see it under seven, somewhere between four and seven, okay? But if it's up over nine, it's a sign we're not metabolizing that well. And homocysteine is very reactive, causes major inflammation, in the blood vessels and increases your risk when it's up over nine of a heart attack, stroke, and developing neurodegenerative conditions like Alzheimer's and dementia. So it's a major issue. When our body metabolizes homocysteine, it produces glutathione, which is our body's master antioxidant. It also produces SAMe. And again, B12 is critical for that metabolism. And SAMe is the precursor and it helps form uh, things like serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine. And so, whereas glutathione is key for, for detoxification and protecting against oxidative stress. So we need the B12 for that proper metabolism of homocysteine so we can detox effectively, produce the right neurotransmitters. That's also critical here. Now, best B12 foods are gonna be animal-based foods. All your grass-fed meats, best sources of B12, pasture-raised eggs, great sources of vitamin B12. There are some things that are marketed out there for vegetarians and vegans for B12, and you can take a B12 supplement, okay, but there's no actual plant-based food, even algaes, that have a real form of B12 that's absorbable. The vitamin B12 in algae is what we call pseudo B12, and so it doesn't actually get into the cell. It's not a form that our body can really utilize as a B12 analog, and so it's really key from that perspective. Now. We can take vegan-based vitamin B12 um, as a supplement. And so why would somebody, well, first off, we gotta look at why would somebody be deficient in B12? One is a vegetarian or vegan diet or just a high processed food diet can cause um, B12 deficiency. Another is chronic stress. The more stress we're under, the more B12 we are going to, to run through. On top of that, if you're taking different medications, things like statin drugs, metformin, uh, chemotherapy drugs, steroids, oral contraceptives, birth control pills, all those things, antidepressants, all deplete B12 levels. So if you are on a uh, medication of any type, you should be testing your B12 levels, making sure it's up over 800 on a regular basis. Also look at your homocysteine levels. That's really key as well. Also, you can look at uric acid levels. Uric acid levels, if they're very, very low, under three, that could also be an indication of a vitamin B12 deficiency. We wanna keep our uric acid levels low, somewhere under 5.5, roughly between uh, four and five, or three and a half and five, but we don't wanna drop below three. That's a sign we're not go undergoing phase two liver detox effectively, and uh, that's an indication of a B12 deficiency. And so, making sure our B12 is, is, is optimized is key. People with low stomach acid levels from, let's say, a H. pylori infection in their stomach, oftentimes have this B12 deficiency. So low stomach acid levels, you need stomach acid to produce intrinsic factor. Intrinsic factor is a protein in the stomach that cleaves B12 and allows you to absorb it. And so if you have autoimmunity to the intrinsic factor protein, which a lot of people do, or if you have an infection in your stomach that's not allowing you to produce enough stomach acid, then you're not gonna be able to produce intrinsic factor effectively and get the B12 to absorb into your bloodstream. For those individuals, we use a sublingual form of B12, right, or an injection. So you can get in B12 injections, or if you don't wanna get the injections, I would prefer not to, then you would take a sublingual, which is something that will dissolve under your tongue, get right into your bloodstream, bypass the digestive system, and get your B12 levels up. Very effective form of supplementation. When we're looking at supplements for B12, you want uh, methylcobalamin is the best form. What you don't want is cyanocobalamin. That is a low cost form, but it has a cyanide molecule 
attached to the B12 and your liver has to detoxify that. So it's not a very good form. It's very inexpensive, but not a good form. Most supplements out there have cyanocobalamin. You want a methylated form. Methyl B12 is really the best form. A lot of people are concerned about MTHFR gene mutations and MTRR gene mutations. They need the methylated form. That's the only way that they're going to get those methylation cycles working well. Methyl cobalamin is the source that you're looking for. Now, there are other types. There's a hydroxy B12. That's the most common that's in an injection. And uh, you, can, you can certainly use that, but I wouldn't use that long term. The injections may be good for getting your levels up high quickly, but then turn to an oral form of methyl cobalamin for best uh, for the best use. There's also adenosine and cobalamin, uh, and that is the most unstable form, and it's also the most expensive form. So for some people, that seems to work really well, but it is also an expensive form. In our body, our body is constantly circulating back and forth between methyl B12 and adeno B12. And so inside our body, our body is constantly converting back between methyl and adeno B12. So adeno B12 is a good form. Again, again it's more expensive than the methylated form. Methylated form is what you're looking for. So get your methyl B12 levels optimized. Make sure that you're testing on a regular basis, looking at your B12 levels, looking at your homocysteine levels, as well as your red blood cells to make sure that they're maturing properly and that you have enough B12 in your system. Again, very common deficiency as people are aging, the risk for a B12 deficiency increases. So very important that you're testing, especially as you get older, to make sure you're not dealing with a vitamin B12 deficiency.